to the new session. Hope you all are doing fine. Today we will be studying biology and as I know it is a new subject for you all so I will start with the basic introduction and the topic for today is the leaf. As you can see on the screen also there is a leaf drawn in this light. Moving further with the introduction, as we know that our planet Earth is full of living and non-living things. Example of non-living things are table, chair, pen, book, etc. Whereas example of living things include human being, animals, microorganisms, plants, etc. If we talk about plants, plants are of different kinds. Some plants are short, some are tall, some plants have strong stem or woody stem which is called as bark. Some plants have very weak stem and very fragile just as coriander. Some plants are of different shapes, different size, different color etc. But being of different kind, they have some common features among them. Example of flowering plants. All the flowering plants will have root, stem and leaves. Now if we talk about a plant structure of a plant full plant is divided into two parts the two parts are known as shoot system and root system now let us study about them what is a shoot system shoot system is the part of the plant which is present above the ground. As you can see in the picture, the labeling of the diagram is also given as shoot system. Moving to second point of the shoot system, it consists of various parts and it consists of stem, which bears the following part. What are the parts of the shoot system now? It is having branches. It is having leaves, flowers, buds and fruit. You can see the various labeling also in the given diagram. Now the third point in shoot system is the various part of the shoot system as I told you, leaves, flowers, fruit, branches, they all have their own functions. Okay? Now moving on the root system. What is a root system? The root system, as it is clear by the name also, it consists of root. And it is the underground part of the plant. Alright. Root system is the underground part of the plant. And the only part it consists of is the root. And the function of root is that root absorb water from the soil 
and transport it to the shoot system. As we know that plants need water for their growth and development. So this root transfer water to the shoot for the growth and development. Now as I have already taught you that shoot system is having various parts. Flowers, branches, buds, fruit and leaf. Now let us talk about leaf. First question which arises is what is a leaf? Now definition of a leaf if you want you can write down in your rough copy also. Leaf is a flat, thin and green expanded part of the shoot system. I am repeating the definition. You can listen one more time. Leaf is a flat, thin and green expanded part of the shoot system. Then leaf is also known as the food factory of the plant. What does the term food factory means? It is a factory which prepares food, which makes food. So leaf is called as the food factory of the plant. And why it is called the food factory of the plant? Because leaf prepares food for the plants. Leaf prepare food for the plants and they grow up to a certain size. Can a leaf keep on growing and growing and reach up to the sky? No, that is not possible. Leaf, as you must be knowing, is having a definite shape and size. It cannot grow beyond a particular size. So this is all about leaf. Leaf, the important thing to remember over here is leaf is called the food factory of the plant. Alright, moving further. Coming on next topic is structure of a leaf. Now we have studied what is a leaf, what is the function, main function of the leaf. Now let us study about structure of a leaf. What are the various parts of the leaf? So as you can see there are majorly three parts of a leaf. Leaf lamina, leaf stalk and the midrib. What is a leaf lamina? Now as you can see in the picture, now this full part that you can see green color broad flat part this is called the leaf lamina so if we define the leaf lamina how we will define it it is a green flat and expanded part of the leaf the tip of the lamina is known as apex as you can see, I am moving the cursor on the screen. This tip of the lamina, it is known as apex. The next part of the leaf is leaf stalk, which is also called as petiole. Now, what is leaf stalk? This part, the basal part of the leaf, which is attached to the node of the Stem. This part is called the leaf petiole. You can also see the labeling over here. The third part of the leaf is the midrib. What is the midrib? Now this petiole enters into the lamina forming the midrib. 
this line this middle line which you can see which is dividing the leaf into two equal part the center line is called as the midrib the midrib branches out to form the veins now you can see this midrib is further divided into veins you can see the labeling veins now these vein further divide into small veinlets or venules you can see in the diagram now the question is what is the function of veins answer veins provide supportive framework to the leaf now veins are fully like a uh, spread on the leaf and they support the leaf the next topic is functions of a leaf so these are the basic function of a leaf what is the first and primary function of a leaf i have already taught you the primary function of a leaf is to make food with the help of carbon dioxide and water in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll this process is called photosynthesis you must have already started about the process in your previous classes so this is the major function of a leaf to do the process of photosynthesis next function of leaf is it helps in transpiration what is transpiration it is the loss of water through stomata in presence of sunlight we will study all these things further in the class the third function of the leaf is leaf of some plant store food example spinach spinach store food leaf gets modified into spines in desert plants to reduce loss of water due to transpiration if we talk about the plants in desert like cactus cactus does not have leaf but cactus has spines on them so what are the spines the leaves of the cactus have changed into spine to protect the plant from transpiration okay and the last is in some plants such as bryophyllum leaves it give rise to a new plant leaf can also give rise to a new plant so these are the functions of leaf now there are two kinds of leaf now what are the two kinds of leaf one is simple leaf and one is compound leaf so what is a simple leaf as you can see in the picture simple leaf the lamina is having a single blade means a single lamina is present margin has no incision or cuts can you see the margin of the leaf this is the margin of the leaf the edges of the leaf are there any cuts on the margin no so in a simple leaf there are no cuts on the margin and thirdly if the marginal incisions are present it does not reach the midrib all right example of simple leaf are radish mango and banyan if you see these plants radish mango and banyan leaf you can see they are having a simple leaf next type of leaf is a compound leaf now the lamina is divided into a number of leaflets now as you can see in this picture a single lamina is divided into leaflets these small small leaf like structure which you can see here they are known as leaflets and are they various leaves no they are a single it is a single lamina 
which splits into leaflets. Margin has incision or cut. Now the leaflets of the margin of the leaflets will be having cuts. As you can see cuts on the leaf of a rose plant. Then marginal incision reach down to the midrib forming leaflets. Now example of compound leaf are rose, rose leaf, neem leaf and prickly poppy etc. You can see these type of leaf in rose, neem and prickly poppy. So that is all about today's class children. Thank you and have a nice day.